Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Tachometer Custom Visual. Now, this visual is really ideal for looking at measure data that you have. So you're trying to compare against a goal or some kind of target that you have. This is a great visual to be able to manage that. So it's very similar to gauges that you have already with inside of Power BI. But what you really have an advantage over with this visual is that there are a lot more customizations that you can do. So you can actually take this tachometer and turn it sideways if you wanted to. You can change the orientation. You can change the colors. You can do a lot of things with inside of this tachometer. It's been made very customizable for the users. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, though. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can start to use the tachometer with an example I've created for you. All right, for, so for this example, we're going to be looking at customer satisfaction data. So we're going to be looking at our customer representative data that's rolled up to the highest level so we can kind of look at that and analyze it in the tachometer. So we're going to start by going underneath the Get Data section, and we're going to pull data from an Excel workbook that I have ready to go for us, and it's called Customer Satisfaction. So I'll go ahead and select that and hit Open. Once I've selected that workbook, I'll go ahead and select Scores. That's the spreadsheet I have, which has pretty minimal data in it that's been rolled up to the highest level. I'll select Load to bring this now into the Power BI desktop. And once I do, I can start to manipulate and use this inside of the report layer. Now, before I start to bring any other visuals in, I'm going to go ahead and focus this example in on the tachometer. So we're going to go up to the marketplace, the custom visual marketplace here. And from the marketplace, we'll search for the tachometer. And we should find the visual here that we can use, a highly customizable gauge. That's exactly how I described it earlier. So we'll go ahead and select it here and add that into our visualization pane. So we see the tachometer now available, and we can add that into our design surface. And now we can decide which fields that we have from our list here we want to add to the field well that we have in the middle section here. So for example, I want to have my, vo my value showing the number of positive interactions that we had. So that's what we should be looking at. So I had a, a total of 158 positive interactions shown inside this data set. And I also want to be able to control the, the ending points and wherever our, our gauge starts and ends, because right now it's automatically ending at double the amount of the value that we have right now. So double whatever 158 is is what you're going to see for our top end value here. But what I can do is I can actually control that. So maybe I want the top end here to be the total number of interactions that we had, not just in, uh, positive, but also negative. So I'm going to put the total interactions being my end value. So you can see my end value is somewhere around 170. And so I, I think I've done here is I've now changed the gauge or the tachometer to show the top value showing the total number of interactions that I had company-wide. All right, now I can bring in a few other things. So maybe we want to see the target value to be placed in as the target. So I have a target right here. I can drop into the target value. And so it looks like my goal is to have 147 positive interactions where I'm actually beating my goal right now, which is great. Then I can actually control the ranges here. Right now, there's only one range. Everything is good. Everything's green. But what we can do is we can actually control the ranges from a data set as well. So I can bring in these two fields I have here to control my ranges. So this is range two. This is range three. And the way that the ranges are working right now is by default, the highest range is bad. But in this case, the more positive interactions I have is actually a better thing. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're actually going to change inside the format section the way that we see these interactions displayed. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the format section. And underneath the format section, we can actually change the gauge ranges, which we'll do here in just a moment. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do it now. Let's go ahead and go underneath range one. And let's change range one instead of being defaulted to the green color here. Let's change the, that to a more of a red, more of a pure red here. So I'm going to select red there. And then for our range three, range two is fine. Range three, we're going to make this more of a bright color green, like so. There we go. So the higher the number, the better in this scenario. There might be other scenarios of your data. For example, healthcare, the higher the blood pressure is actually a bad thing. So we want to kind of uh, control this and, and flip in this case so that the, the ranges are set. So the higher, the better in our scenario. Now you can do a few other things here underneath the gauge axes. You can actually change things like the start value. So maybe I want the start value to be something like 75. And it'll kind of balance out the range here a little bit if you wanted to do that. You could also change the start angle and the end angle. So if I wanted to, I could actually have this kind of end at a different angle if I wanted to. So I can do something like a seven degree angle here, and you can have the gauge showing a little bit differently if you prefer to have a style like this so it takes up less real estate, you can certainly do that. So here I can take up much less space by using it as an angle. 
In this scenario, though, I'm going to go ahead and leave this as a standard looking gauge. So I'm going to take off that angle and leave it as is. All right, and as we work our way down, you can see underneath the target section. From the target section, you might want to change the length of the target. So the target line that you see right here, you can adjust the length of that line. So maybe I make it uh, take up 80%, for example, and that way the target line actually goes all the way down to the base that you see on the bottom here. And you could also increase the text size of the target if you wanted to. So I'm increasing that a few points up so it's easier to read that my target was 147 positive interactions. You can change the color of that, of course, and you can change the, cha the color of the line. The indicator is what you see right here. So this little uh, pointer here is the indicator. And on that needle, you can, of course, change the color if you wanted to. So I could make that maybe more of a red if I wanted to see that. You could also change the base. This little half circle here, a little bit more than a half circle, is the base. And you can change that color here if you wanted to. Maybe I make that both a red if I wanted to. You can certainly do that. And you can also increase the size of both of those as well. So if I wanted to, I could increase the size of the base, make it take up more space. Or you can increase the needle size as well. I'm going to revert both of those back to the default. I kind of like the way it looked by default. But just know you can make changes to that setting here underneath the indicator section. Underneath the axis labels, you can come under here and you can actually turn off the axis labels if you wanted to, or you can increase the number of instances of those labels. So you can change the count. So you, right now it's set to, if you expand this, you can see it's set to uh, four approximately, and there's some that fall off the, the rails here. But you can actually increase the number of occurrences here. So if you want to see them more often, you can increase the number of labels that you're seeing. You could also bump up the text size of the labels so I can see them more clearly. And then I probably might just actually bump that back down. Let's, let's lower the number of occurrences here to something more reasonable. You can also change the uh, precision. So if you're working with a number that has decimal places, for example, you might want to change the precision there. A little bit lower down, you can see the callout value section. Here, you can actually also change the value that you have on the bottom. So the bottom that's showing, the value on the bottom is the callout value. And from here, you can do things like maybe perhaps change the color, maybe make it more of a pure black. You can change the, the text size of it some, so I can bump up the text size so it's much more obvious, the value that's being displayed here. And you can change where the offset is, meaning the alignment that you see. Maybe you want to move this value to the left or to the right some, you can check, change the X and Y offset if you wanted to do that. All right, then if you go a little further down, you have a call out for a percent. You can actually add a percent call out here. And that just adds below that a percent value showing you that right now we're 85% of our goal. If you wanted to, you could flip that. You can, there's an option here called invert where you could actually invert that and say we didn't meet 15% of our goal. So in some cases, we, we didn't fully meet our goal. There's some cases where we're 15% of it. And so you can kind of decide how you'd want to see that. You can also increase the text size of that as well so it's a little bit more obvious. All right, as we work our way a little further down, the last piece here that you'll see is the margin section. Under the mar margin section, you can decide how much of the margin area that you want it to take up. So if you want to lower the margins to more of a more reasonable or lower amount, you can change that here. I'm going to put that as two point margins around the board, and you'll see it just edge its way closer to the edges of the design surface. So that's really it for this one. It's a pretty simple one. The only thing that I, else I might want to do is I might want to change the title. Right now, the title is you know, got a lot of column names in it, but it's not very clear on what that is. So what you would likely do is also go underneath the, the title section of the format area here and change the title to something more obvious of what we're looking at here. So I can call this something like positive or let's say customer satisfaction gauge. Something like that. And then, of course, we can increase the size of this. We could center the font. We can make it where it's a lot easier to see this gauge, you know, change the color of it, of course. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of adjust and make this clear. Add a background color. That's what I selected there. You could certainly do that. You have a lot of options in here. So that's the nice thing about this gauge is there's a lot of customizations that you can make inside of this tachometer. And it's a pretty fun little one to work with. And as long as you have data that helps support it really well, you can play around with it and get some good results. So I hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual. Look forward to showing you our next one and our next module. Thanks a lot.